Hi everyone, welcome to week seven. This week you have an assignment that basically covers your entire paper. So if you do it correctly, you'll have most of your paper written when you finish this week. So you're gonna continue working on this essay three, which is the midterm essay. You're going to recall and apply concepts from the readings like you usually do. And then you're gonna produce an introduction that discusses audience, purpose, and genre, and body paragraphs that include a topic sentence, supporting a given claim, ethos, pathos, logos, using properly cited sources from the reading while exhibiting appropriate grammar, vocabulary, and syntax. You have an outline due also. Once you do the homework, the outline should be really easy. And the reason I have you do an outline, even though you've done the homework and making it pretty easy, is to make sure that you include everything that you need to include in the essay. So why do I say that? One of the main things that people leave out of this essay is the summary that you did for homework last week. So discuss rhetorical strategy thesis statements. So you have some reading to do. I'm going to read this entire chapter and this one you've already read. So you're just reviewing it and then look at your handouts that you previously have received. They should be, they're down below also. You have some videos to look at. These are all really good. Be sure you watch them. A PowerPoint, that's excellent. Again, be sure you watch them. It's from, it's not just a rehash of this book. It's a different, a, it's, a, um, it's a different, from a different work. Your homework, you have step two and step three are due. Step two is some question asking strategies about ethos, pathos, and logos. Step three is to submit an outline. You have a discussion post due, and here's your student learning outcomes. So you have a reading quiz that's due. Nothing too unusual about that. Here's the strategies for writing closed form probes. You want to look at this PowerPoint. Here are two of your handouts, integrating quotes in the rhetorical triangle. Here's another one, the rhetorical triangle, and then the clean sweep. So this rhetorical analysis Again, how to write the rhetorical analysis. You saw this in chapter six. This is a good handout for that. The rhetorical critique. Here's the main prompt. Be sure you read this. And, and as you, before you start diving into all the work, I would be sure you just review this every time you start working on this paper so you know what you need to be doing. You're writing, and the key thing is that you are not writing about what the author says, but are about how the author says it. So here's step three. The, you have two homeworks this week. This is the first one, and it's question asking strategy, and you're going to work with your source. So it says to be sure to use attributive tags, Smith says or Smith argues, etc., and quotation marks for any quoted passages. But on the other hand, you should use a um, try to paraphrase more than you quote. And then it says, do not string quotes or paraphrase this together. This is really important. Every time you put a quote or a paraphrase in your paper, you should tell your reader why it's there. Is it is the quote an example of ethos? Then you should tell your reader that. Is it an example of logos? Does it make some point that needs that's really important? So you need to, you, readers are super lazy. You need to tell them why these quotes and paragraphs are there. So here it says, you need to provide your reader with some explanation as to why, why that material is important and irrelevant to your topic or thesis. In other words, how does the evidence support your position? Does the quote paraphrase display ethos or logos or pathos? How do you know? Be specific and tell your reader. Don't assume your readers will know what you mean. So you have four questions and each one of these questions, if you answer them fully in a full paragraph, represent one of the paragraphs that you will be using in your essay. So the first one is the introduction and it says in six to seven sentences, describe the author's intended audience and describe his or her purpose in writing the article you have chosen. Why does the author want people to support his or her ideas? How well does the article suit the author's purpose and audience? How does the author's own angle of vision shape his or her perspective? So in this case, you haven't chosen this, you had one assigned. The second, the body paragraph is about pathos. So it says, describe how the writer's word choices appeal to pathos. Write a paragraph describing how the author's language choices, sentence length, and 
complexity, support the text's main ideas, and how those choices appeal to readers' emotion. So provide sufficient examples and analysis. So you're going to write a whole paragraph about that. In paragraph three, you're going to talk about ethos. In six to seven sentences, make a list of the factors that demonstrates the writer's appeal to ethos. How well does the author persuade readers that he or she is knowledgeable, reliable, credible, and trustworthy? Provide sufficient examples and analysis. Number four, I wonder what that one could be about. I think it's about logos. Write a well paragraphed, uh, uh, write a paragraph describing how the author has or has not created a reasonable, logically structured argument. Paraphrase some of his or her reasons and explain how those reasons are log logical and reasonable. What evidence, facts, stats, data does he or she employ to support these ideas? Provide sufficient examples and analysis. So you can see these three are body paragraphs, and then this one is the introduction. You want to write whole paragraphs so you can get some feedback about, yeah, this is good or no, we need to, to work on something here or there, but it'll help you to write a better essay. And then step three is the outline. So by now, after you've done this homework, you should be able to formulate a thesis that states whether or not the author used ethos, pathos, and logos effectively. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they used ethos and pathos effectively, but not logos. Maybe they used logos effectively, but not pathos. So you can say that. And there's the example that we've used in the past is right here. And then the outline, it says you're going to write your thesis statement at the top of the page that clearly states whether or not you find the author's use of rhetoric effective. You have to say that. You can't just say they used ethos, pathos, and logos. Everybody uses ethos, pathos, and logos. You have to say whether or not they used it effectively. In the, you don't really need the introduction and outline. You could just have a bullet point that says introduction, and that's all you really need to write. And then another bullet point that says summary, and that's all you need to write because I've already seen those things. And then the body paragraph topics, you do need to outline. So you'll have a topic sentence that says maybe logos, and then below you might show what quotes or paraphrases you're using to demonstrate logos so that I understand that you understand how to write this paper. And then you'd have another body paragraph for, for ethos, another body paragraph for pathos. And you need to give some examples that show how those display ethos, pathos, or logos. It would be even better if you gave a little hint as to why you think those are ethos, pathos, or logos. You don't need a conclusion at all. Conclusions I find um, are usually written at the end of the paper, after you've done all this work, and then you can really come up with something. In your conclusion, though, you want to look at eventually when you write it, we'll look at that later, uh, why does anybody need to know this stuff? Okay, your discussion post this week is about your thesis statement, and it asks you to write down your tentative thesis statement, and then you can help your peers write better ones. So basically you're writing the body of the paper this week. You're outlining the paper so that you have it square in your head about how it's going to work so it comes together well. Larry Morton.